Hello and welcome to another gloriously sunny edition of Dream Deals, the programme that tells you everything you've ever wanted to know about your favourite car manufacturer and some things you probably didn't, as well as giving you helpful real world advice on how to get your hands on your very own Dream Deal. This week we're looking at a manufacturer whose name is synonymous with wealth and luxury, a manufacturer whose history is steeped in motor racing success. Who am I talking about? Well, there's a few clues. Mercedes Benz. Gottlieb Daimler and Karl Benz were only born 60 miles apart in southern Germany. Because of their differing approach to car manufacture, it's thought the two never met, and it is a little known fact that Daimler, generally known as the father of modern automobiles, never liked to drive, if indeed he ever learned. The two companies, Daimler and Benz, merged on the 28th of June 1926, creating the company we know today, Mercedes-Benz. The name Mercedes was first given to a special car made for Emil Jelnek, a wealthy racing driver of the time, who named the car after his daughter. After the merger, a symbol was chosen for the combined products of DMG and Benz. The new insignia was a three-pointed star wreathed with laurel, with the words Mercedes at the top and the Benz at the bottom. The new company did well after the merger and production rose to nearly 8,000 cars in 1927. That year also saw the first two cars to sport the Mercedes-Benz badge. They were the Stuttgart and the Mannheim. The cars of the 1930s produced great racing success. The silver metal bodywork gave rise to the name Silver Arrows when the W25 racer had the white paint removed to lower its weight. The W125 with a top speed of 200 miles per hour won 7 out of 13 races in 1937, followed by the even more successful W154. And the 1958 190SL and the 1964 220SEB are two of those classic Mercedes that you see drive past and you think, I'd love to have one of those, and they're surprisingly affordable. So if you've ever been seduced, here's Ian Royal with everything you need to know. Overshadowed by the 300SL, the four-cylinder 190SL is a fine car in its own right. It was built from 1955 to 1963. The 190 SL was available as a roadster, coupe and a combination, coupe cabriolet. Mercedes-Benz also offered a sports roadster version, of which only a few were sold. The S in SL means sports and the L means light, liked. However, the 190 SL is not really a sports car and is not at all light. The 190 SL is really a touring car and, compared to other four-cylinder, two-seater sports cars of its day, weighs 500 to 1,000 pounds more. It's a Mercedes-Benz 190 SL from 1958. It's a car that I've always admired and it's this particular model. I've known about it for a number of years and when it came up for sale, I was fortunate enough to be able to uh, conclude the deal and buy it. I've had this car now for four years. Parts are not cheap either and some are hard to come by. A front wheel bearing is £42, pressure plates £99, voltage regulator £107 and rear wheel cylinders £52. A voltage regulator that will be £107, thank you, timing chain £47 and pressure plate £99. But a 1950 190SL will set you back the grand total of £21,478. I paid £20,000 for it and it's probably worth 25 now at least. The parts are very easy to come by, you can buy everything from Mercedes or one of their uh, agents, there's one in, in England, but there's also a very good firm in Hamburg who I've dealt with as well. Well, everything's for sale at the right price, <laughs> so yes I would sell it if the right offer came along, but it would have to be the right offer and I would probably replace it with another Mercedes of a different type. By this time, the demeanour of the SL was set in stone as a solidly built, comfortable open car with great touring credentials. Its 0 to 60 miles per hour time of just a hair under 10 seconds with the auto transmission was mundane. It was a second and a half slower than a comparable automatic equipped Corvette. But in terms of ride comfort and assembly quality, the 280 SL was true to its roots. Certainly the 280SL set a new standard for sports cars from Daimler-Benz and as such is deserving of its place amongst the greatest cars of all time. This is the Mercedes 280. I had the car approximately 11, 12 months now. The quality of build is out of this world so it's the model I always wanted. The colour down, down to the ground. 
Again, parts are not cheap, with a rear wheel bearing costing £22, temperature gauge £91, blinker switch £137, sport suspension spring kit £431, and ignition wire set £47. We found a good example of the 280SL with 99,000 miles on the clock still going for £4,995. I paid approximately 11500 and I shouldn't be, I wouldn't take anything under 13000 I have owned many classic cars, but the Mercedes, when I retired, was the one I always promised myself. This is what I look for, this is what I purchased. The legendary S prefix began at a race at the Nürburgring on the 19th of June 1927 and established a lead that would never be relinquished through several different incarnations. The S originally stood for sport, but now simply recognised as the mark of all flagship Mercedes-Benz. Now the S-Class has introduced us to such firsts as airbags, ESP and keyless driving. Now, Think Mercedes and you're instantly thrown into a world of refined German magistry. These cars don't just eat the road, they cruise on and on and on. Now Mercedes make big luxury cars very well, maybe better than anybody else and there's no doubting that today's S-Class is a big luxury car. But it doesn't feel it. Drive this car along country lanes or through the town and it's remarkably nimble. Today's S-Class is smaller than its predecessor but it does have stronger engines. Even the 2.8 V6, which is the base model, has a fair amount of grunt. And above that, there is a 3.7 litre V6, 5 litre V8 and two 500 brake horsepower cars. The supercharged 5.5 V8 AMG is a monster, along with the equally awesome twin-turbo V12. And it pains me to say, even the 3.2 turbo diesel isn't bad. I praise for a diesel in my book. The automatic gearbox has a seamless gear change and the engine noise is largely absent, even in that diesel smoking thing. Now, motoring journalists the world over have hailed this as the best car in the world, but with huge running costs and massive depreciation, I'm not so sure. But this car is at the pinnacle of the luxury car market and it is beautiful, so you can forgive it almost anything. Now trust Mercedes to come up with something for those of us who can't choose between a coupe and a cabriolet. Well, with an SLK you get both cars in one gorgeous package. At the touch of a button your hard top SLK coupe gently lifts its boot lid, winds the window down for you and stows the roof away converting your beautiful coupe into a cabriolet. A remarkable piece of engineering and reason enough for me at least to buy an SLK. Only the Germans. Nice action. Of course there are plenty of other reasons why the waiting lists for an SLK have been so long. Not least of which is the Mercedes badge on the front. Although it looks expensive compared with the BMW Z3 and especially if you delve deeply into the options list you're assured of cast iron residual values. Sure, it's not the most exciting car in the world to drive, but it is very accomplished. Initially, real sports car enthusiasts were irritated by the lack of a manual gearbox. But Mercedes have sorted that now, and with this, you get a six speed. Some will want more feedback through the steering, others a more tighter ride through the corners. But that would be to misjudge the SLK. It's not a sports car, it's a genteel open top tourer. Now others may tear around with tyres squealing and palms sweating, but the SLK driver will get there just as quickly and be able to hold that first gin and tonic without her hands shaking. Now there comes a time in every motoring journalist's life when standing next to nice cars just isn't good enough. No, I get paid to drive them. Let's play a little game of fantasy car making and decide what ingredients you'd need to make the perfect dream deal. Well, for me, the list is like this. It's got to look good. It's got to be well made and definitely have the right badge. It's got to have a certain degree of sporting capabilities. It's got to be able to carry me and a couple of passengers in a high level of comfort. It's got to be good value and it's got to have good resale values. Do you know, I feel like a cross between Delia Smith and Jeremy Clarkson. In a minute, I'm going to express some right wing views while baking a souffle. Anyway, if those are the ingredients that go to make your dream deal, then I reckon I've got the ideal car, a Mercedes CLK. The Mercedes CLK has been revamped and restyled, and it cuts quite a dash. 
The old car was always popular with the style-conscious motorist, but lost points due to an old chassis that let the handling down. That's gone now, and the new car uses the chassis from the new C-Class, so it's off to a good start. Style-wise, it's sleeker than the old car and fits in well in the new Mercedes range. Inside, the entire new Mercedes range has marked a welcome return to form after a couple of years of slightly suspect build quality, and the new CLK is no different. It's well laid out, exceptionally well put together, and fairly spacious for a two-door coupe. Rear passengers will have to be friends though, but up front there's plenty of room. Now if it's really to be my ideal car, then how it looks and how many people it can carry are less important than how it drives. So just how ideal is this CLK? Let's find out. Now with this CLK, the fun starts the minute you get in. It's Sensor City. Watch this, I'm going to close the door. It sensed that, so straight away closes the windows, front and rear. Then I put my electronic gizmo that doubles as a key into the ignition and voila. The steering wheel goes back to the position I set it at earlier. Great stuff, turn the ignition, senses that I'm ready to go, and there, like your very own private butler, is an arm proffering the seatbelt in a very nice butler type way. I've put it in, and then it goes back to its original position. It's sensed that I'm ready to go, so it's probably in a minute gonna sense that I don't have a passenger, so the arm will go into there, and we're ready to go. Now the V6 on this engine really does make a lovely throaty rasp when you're driving it hard. Get the revs up to four, five thousand and it's got a beautiful note. Now considering the size and performance of this car, the brakes are brilliant. Even in the wet with the traction control and ABS systems working together, that this car really can stop very quickly. The other major niggle for me is the price of this car. This CLK320 costs about £42,000. Now, for that, you do get satellite navigation system, you do get in-car telephones, you get not one but two level of heated seats, that kind of thing. And there's switches down there that have no idea what they're for. But it's all electric, granted, and it senses it for you, obviously. I think one of them is to order the masseur to come to the car. Now, look, the car's got a very nice sensor. can sense that I'm pulling up, so I pull up stop. I'm amazed I have to brake for myself. The car in park, turn it off and then once I take my seat belt off and the key out, the steering wheel goes up. There we go. For all you big pot-bellied German drivers, the steering wheel gets out of the way so you can go for your next lunch. It's sense that I'm getting out, it's taking the windows down a fraction. Very nice. Thanks Jeeves. Now, is this Merc CLK my ideal car? Well, let's go back to the original list. Badge, great build quality, superb residuals, they're all a given, it's a Mercedes. But value for money, 42 grand? I don't think so. Sporting capabilities, nowhere near enough power. Inside space, is there enough room for me and a couple of scally mates in there? Not likely. No, my ideal car is still a Volvo Estate. I'm just joking with you. Well that's about your lot for part one, but stick with us because in part two we take a look at the A210 Evolution and the astonishing CL600, so stick around, we'll see you in a minute. Hello and welcome back to part two of Dream Deals. This week we're looking at Mercedes-Benz, a luxury car maker with a history steeped in the world of motorsport a manufacturer with the ability to make cars of immense opulence but also with the hearts of Formula One cars. The successful A-Class range has got a new member, the A210 Evolution. An A-Class, a dream deal, has Coogan gone stark raving mad I hear you cry? Well what if I tell you this has got AMG styling, light 17 inch alloys, an Alcantara interior and a 140 brake horsepower engine. Now you're listening. This new top of the range model once again demonstrates the flexibility of the unique A-Class design concept. Since its launch in 1997, the compact trendsetter has delighted more than 730,000 customers around the world. The front end is characterised by the new sportier radiator grille and the powerful front apron with integral fog lamps. Viewed from the side, the picture is dominated by the elegant seven-spoke light alloy wheels. Further distinctive touches are added by the striking side skirts and the new exterior mirrors with integral indicators. At the back, the muscular rear apron, the twin-chromed exhaust tailpipes and the wind-deflecting elements on the rear window lend further emphasis to the car's dynamic character. 
The exclusive interior emphasizes the special status of the top of the line A-Class. Dark grey leather and brushed aluminium create an environment with a particularly pleasing look and feel. So is the A-Class a dream deal? Well, probably not, not on its own. But what you are doing is buying into a mark that has dream deal all over it. Because with Mercedes, you get a little bit of history. Cars such as the 1964 250SL are the kind of cars we still dream about. So if you're tempted, here's Ian Royal with a few tips on how you can buy a little piece of history. These cars attract a lot of attention wherever they go and are still a pleasure to drive. The mechanical fuel injection is usually very reliable but takes a lot of experience and special tools when repairs or adjustments are required. The body is classic Benz and if the car was well cared for, should not be a problem. Even the newest 250s are still almost 30 years old now and all cars should be carefully checked for rust and rot. This one's the Mercedes 250 SL from 1967. I've had this car now for probably about 14, 15 years, I think. A long time. Uh, I bought it because I like the style of it, uh, the idea of the roof coming off, and you've got a soft top underneath, so that if you want security and waterproof aspect of it, you put the roof on. If you want the open air motoring and the wind blowing through your hair, it's wonderful, so they tell me. Um, I've no personal experience of that, but uh, I'm told it's very good. It was a model that always took my eye, and it was a very elegant car and, uh, and looked very nice. And when I was deciding to buy a, a sort of sports car, I looked at various types, and I thought the Mercedes looked quite striking and, and quite different, really, and the style was something that always appealed to me. Almost all parts are still readily available from Mercedes or third-party supply houses, but many, particularly chrome trim and head and tail light assemblies, are expensive. Spark plugs are £9, an air filter £10, door seal £40, starter £78, an alternator will set you back £44, the brake master cylinder £62 and a heavy duty shock absorber for £57. A car with a rebuilt engine which has done 24000 is going for £21,700. It's not too expensive to maintain. I can do the mechanical things myself and there are various suppliers, certainly in Germany, because they're very popular in Germany, this sort of car. And there are suppliers over there that have all the parts, either remanufactured or original Mercedes parts, because Mercedes will still produce wings and body panels for these cars, even though they're 30 odd years old. You can still get them. Unless I come on hard times, I don't think I should sell it. I, I wouldn't replace it with anything. I'd probably add to it as I, I do frequently when people offer me an interesting car and say, do you know anybody wants to buy it? I think, mm, yeah, that's nice. Will it fit my garage? And then I end up buying the thing. Now, Mercedes have always had a reputation for making sports cars that are stylish and elegant, but also very expensive. And with this CL600, that tradition continues. Not only is it very fast, 0 to 60 in less than five seconds, but it's also very expensive. It'll cost you well over £90,000. As you walk around the car, there's no doubting that the CL is a truly beautiful vehicle, full of nice little touches, such as the wing mirror folding neatly in to blend in with the car's lines. I have one small gripe, and I think I'm entitled to it, and that's that the boot seems a little long, a bit too big for the car's profile. Now, if it was a bit shorter, 90 grand wouldn't seem so much. Now this CL600 is for the seriously minted, the seriously impractical and probably the big fat seriously serious businessman. I mean, the Mercedes badge is a mark of distinction, but £100,000, I mean, seriously. Now if you thought your 469 horsepower E55 AMG or your 493 horsepower SL55 AMG was enough to make you top dog among your AMG brethren, you thought wrong. In Geneva, Mercedes pulled the wraps off the CL65 AMG, the most powerful AMG model to date. Unlike the E55 and SL55, which are powered by a supercharged V8, the CL65 is motored by a twin-turbo V12. The distinction of being the most powerful Mercedes production model ever built pretty much says it all. Its twin turbochargers infuse the 6-litre V12 power plant with an astonishing 612 horsepower. Heavy-duty driveline components are used throughout to assure that its prodigious power doesn't lay waste to vital components. 
the suspension received a similar round of upgrades to provide the added control needed to harness such incredible levels of power. Steering wheel mounted shift paddles allow for quick control of the standard 5-speed automatic transmission, while industrial strength 8 piston brake calibers up front guarantee plenty of stopping power. Other exterior enhancements include 19-inch AMG twin-spoke wheels and V12 Biturbo badging, of course. With a muscly AMG 12-cylinder engine, the coupe matches the performance of thoroughbred sports cars. From standstill, the CL65 AMG accelerates to 60 miles per hour in only four and a half seconds. Its maximum speed is electronically limited to 155 miles per hour. The new AMG engine is based on the 12-cylinder unit of the Mercedes-Benz S-Class. Power is transferred by a five-speed automatic transmission with the speed shift function and steering wheel gear shift. The exceptional torque of the V12 is always safely under control thanks to modifications to various transmission components, the rear axle differential, the drive shafts and the wheel carriers. Like all models in the CL class, the new CL65 AMG is fitted as standard with the active body control suspension system, whose spring struts have been configured for greater stiffness in the high performance coupe. I think it's safe to say that Mercedes make some of the most desirable cars on the road today. They have a history steeped in motor racing glory and world conquering luxury. It doesn't matter which model you drive, from the top of the range S-Class to the Mini A-Class, they're all considered dream deals. It seems you could stick the three-pointed star on just about anything and give it that dream deal status. Worthy of our programme. Best selling car in the world this, might be worth some at second hand. <laughs>